Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.4, an Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper module. Welcome to tutorial 13, JSOW. Uh, the JSOW is the Joint Standoff Weapon. It's a type of glide bomb which can be carried by the F-16. It's uh, guided by inertial navigation and GPS. It's not powered and it's in the thousand pound class of weaponry. And you can see here that I've got uh, doubles loaded on pylons three and seven, which are in fact the only pylons that you can load this weapon on, on the F-16. Uh, you can carry them singly or you can carry them, as I have done here, on BRU-57 Smart Racks, which allows you to carry a total of four. The version of the JSO used in the F-16 is the AGM-154A. Um, there are also B and C models, but the A model is the only version used on the F-16. Uh, in this version of the weapon, uh, each JSO contains 145 bomblets of the type BLU-97A. Um, these are designed to destroy unarmoured targets and lightly armoured targets, uh, so they're actually perfect for use against SAM sites. Uh, but other types of vehicles, and probably even troops, uh, can be employed by these. Uh, they have a maximum launch range of about 70 nautical miles, but that's entirely dependent upon the altitude and speed of your aircraft at launch, uh, because they don't have any engines or rockets or anything like that, they just pop off the aircraft, deploy their wings and glide towards the target. Um, they can be employed in two modes, pre-planned and visual mode, just the same as the JDAMs in the F-16, uh, and it works pretty much in exactly the same way as you've seen uh, for the JDAMs. So I'm going to go ahead and get the aircraft started up now, and I'll show you how to configure these weapons for launch. Okay, you join me back in the cockpit, en route towards the range. Uh, I have an SA-2 site set up at steer point number one, and we're going to engage it with the JSO. Uh, this is actually a pretty good weapon for that kind of task. Uh, be advised that uh, more modern SAM sites, like the SA-10, uh, will actually shoot down JSOs, uh, and so you're going to tend to need to launch multiple, perhaps even from multiple angles, in order to overwhelm them and ensure a hit. Uh, one little gotcha when you're using the JSO against a steer point, which is what I'm doing today, I'm going to use steer point 1 because that's the location of the SAM site, uh, the altitude of your steer point must be correct for the target. Um, I've also noticed that changing the altitude once you're in the sim doesn't work. Uh, the JSO will still miss. So if I press steer point just now, you can see steer point 1, altitude 1434 feet, which is correct, that is ground level uh, for that particular location on the map. So, very important thing to note. So, let's get set up with the weapon. We're going to go into air-to-ground mode. I've already got my master arm on, and let's focus down on the right multifunction display and take a look at the weapon settings. So, here's the SMS page, as always, and across the top, we can see that we're in air-to-ground mode. Pressing this will allow us to toggle to the gun. Pressing again will allow us to use normal air-to-ground weapons. The next push button has the sub-modes in which we can use the JSO. We have pre-programmed and visual mode. Visual mode works exactly the same as the JDAM, so I'm not going to demonstrate that today. Uh, but we're going to use pre-planned mode. Uh, inventory push button will display the weapons currently hanging off of the aircraft. Centerline pylon today is empty. On the inners, I have fuel tanks. On the middle pylons, I have smart racks with two AGM-154 alphas each for a total of four. Outer pylons are empty, and the wingtips, I have a captive sidewinder and a training pod. Gun is loaded. Pressing inventory will take me back out. Control page is not implemented yet. Uh, at this stage in early access, the JSOs cannot have their profile changed. The profile is displayed in the middle of the screen here, um, but um, yeah, it's not adjustable. So attack azimuth would just be the angle from which you want the bomb to approach. The EGEA is the end end game entry altitude, so that's the altitude at which the cluster munitions will deploy, uh, defaults to 2,000 feet, and the ROB is the range on bearing, so that's the distance from which the bomb should be approaching at the set attack azimuth, defaults to 5 nautical miles. Down the right hand side we have confirmation that we have 4 AGM-154As on the aircraft, pressing this button would toggle other weapons if we had other weapons on board, we don't today, and we've got the power button. 
setting power to on will then show the weapon indicating ready. Um, I'm getting ready immediately because this is an air start. If I'd started from the ground with a cold aircraft, I would have to align the weapons. So once I'm in the air with the gear up, pressing power on would make the weapon go through its alignment cycle. It would display A10, that number would count down, eventually it would say aligned and then ready. Uh, on the left hand side we can set the target size, not implemented as yet. And then the one thing that is implemented is we can choose to launch a single JSO or a pair. And if we're launching a pair, they can be in tandem or side by side. I'm going to go for a tandem launch. And if you're doing tandem or side by side, you can also choose the spacing. For today's launch, I'm going to have a 500 foot spacing on these weapons. And that is them configured and ready for launch. Um, last thing down at the bottom here, it confirms which pylons have the weapons and which one is currently selected. Pressing nose wheel steering will allow you to toggle from which side you're going to launch first. Let's zoom back out again and take a little look at the HUD symbology. So the HUD symbology looks exactly the same as for the JDAM. We have an azimuth steering line. We're going to align our flight path marker with that. And uh, this horizontal line will travel down uh, and intersect with the flight path marker once we're at maximum range. We have range indications down the right hand side with 80 nautical miles indicated at the top. The correct is the current range. The top of this staple here is maximum drop range. We're just about on it. We have minimum range. And then the last line is zero. The time indicated here, which is four seconds, is time until maximum range. And then we have the bearing and distance to the target. So 084 for 31 miles. Uh, I'm currently at 30,000 feet, about Mach 0.7. Um, as you get higher and faster, you'll be able to drop the weapon at longer range. Okay, let's come out of active pause and let's stabilize the aircraft. We now have on the range indication the letters JIZ for JIZ, uh, and that's JSO in zone. Uh, so I can now press and hold pickle. Weapons are away. I'm now going to turn off target because I don't want that SA-2 to fire on me. And the JSO is completely internally guided, so it needs no further support from us. It will hit the target no matter what. Unless it gets shot down, of course. Uh, let's turn off at about 180, that should be plenty. And level off the aircraft. Okay, I'm going to put the aircraft into autopilot just now. And let's watch the bomb. So you can see here, this is the first bomb. It has deployed its little wings and it's gliding towards the target. That's us up there. And there's the other JSO. Let's accelerate time as it makes its way down towards the target. And let's see what it does once it reaches the target. It's a decent length of flight on this weapon. And like I said, you can launch these from much further out if you have good altitude and speed. There we go. I can see those targets now, just off in the middle distance. Bomb's continuing to come down. It's doing some corrective steering. Let's go to real time now. and get ready to see that splash. I'm going to switch to a fixed camera. Bang! And any moment now we should see the bomblets land on the target. There we go. Nice. That looks like a pretty good effect on target. It looks like it's destroyed most of the launchers, but not the actual radar, but that's okay. I probably could have aimed it slightly better. And the search radar is still scanning us, though. So, that is how you deploy the JSO in pre-planned mode. Visual mode is exactly the same as with the JDAM. You have a HUD cursor, as before, and you would simply fly the HUD cursor over your target and press TMS forward. You could then refine your target using the targeting pod if you're carrying it, or alternatively, just pickle off. And uh, as before, it's then internally guided and needs no further support from your aircraft. So once again, just a quick reminder, 
If you're using a steer point, ensure that the steer point altitude is correctly set in the mission editor. It seems at present it's not possible to edit it here and have it actually affect the flight of the JSO. Seems to be a bug. So, I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. And I'll see you all next time.